afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this media conference with Gareth Self. Okay, and John Stones. Uh, we do have translation available, so if anybody does require translation, then raise your hand. We can get that arranged for you. It looks like everybody can understand English, which is great. So we'll get underway, firstly, with Tim from Sky Sports News. It depends um, <coughs> very slightly from game to game because you, well, the first thing is you're always trying to win. So whenever you pick a team and field a team, you believe it's a strong enough team to win a game of football. Um, what we have got to do is find out about certain players. We've got to manage players at a stage of the season where some are coming back from having had injuries. Um, some haven't played a lot of football in that last period of the season. So to have played... Saturday, Tuesday would be um, very challenging with the heat as well. Um, but whenever we play, you're always trying to learn things. So whichever team you pick for a game like tomorrow, there's the performance, there's the result. You, we, um, we go there to win. Um, and you're looking for what are the learnings from that experience after it. And uh, that's how you continue the process of coaching and, and growing as a team. Raheem playing today and, and yesterday and mm -hmm. Laurie and Mark Gurley as well. Are they likely to be involved and is James just in out of this game and, and will you mm -hmm. look to rotate over the remaining games coming up? Um, James uh, won't be ready for tomorrow um, but we're hopeful that he can be back um, for um, if not the next game then the one after. Um, Mark um, as far as we've assessed him to this point because there's still things going on um, he should be available for tomorrow I think Fick we might give a little bit longer he's he's progressed really well we probably could put him in the squad um, but given it was a sort of hamstring injury then we're going to give that a little bit longer because uh, um, that, that would be beneficial for him um, Raheem absolutely fine here yeah. John you were part of the side that beat Germany at the Euros. Can, can we take you back to that game and just that feeling of, of beating Germany in a knockout game in a major championship, what it meant to you and what it meant for the development of this team and how significant would it be to, to come to Munich and win? Yeah, it was... Um, I think everyone everyone felt the same as as us as, as players. Um, incredible stage that we, we beat them on. Home turf. Um, it was a, it was a big step for us as a team, as a nation. I think um, to progress in that tournament, but to show ourselves what what we're capable of, and also um, we've set a marker now where we've got to, we've got to replicate things like that. We've got to um, be consistent at, at, at winning, um, beating big teams, playing against them, playing well against them. Um, and that's the challenge for us as players now. We've we've uh, we set the bar. Obviously, the other day was was um, a, a big learning curve for us as as a, um, a collective. We've had an incredible run, um, and you know that that stopped the other day, and we we, we got we, a, a loss in uh, God knows how many games. But that's um, that now down to us how we bounce back, how we. Um, show our character, our experience in these games, and and what a what a game to do that um, in tomorrow. It looked like quite a tired performance on Saturday. The heat may have been one of the factors for that. But how difficult is it at the end of a long, grueling season to be at your very best, especially when World Cup places are up for grabs? Um, I think it's easy. You you've got to be um, always ready and fighting, and and, and the the feeling in the camp, the feeling in it, it, around the place and the players is, um, I think we'd, we'd play all year round if we could and that's probably not possible with, with the amount of fixtures but you know we're, we're there, we're willing, uh, we know how important this, this period is for us. Um, 
not so much time, not not many games leading up to the World Cup. And um, yeah, as you said, everyone's fighting for the place, wanting to play well, and um, try and create partnerships, um, learn each other's games, and playing in these big occasions, these big games. Um, you know, it can only um, be a big learning curve and a big um, positive for us as, as, a, as a team. And Gareth, a lot of fans arriving <coughs> into Munich today. Are you concerned, given it's D-Day, that there could be heightened tensions? And are you hoping that England fans represent the country in the right way? Yeah, always hoping that. Um, I don't think there's a lot more I can say that I haven't said last week. Um, or on previous occasions, really. So um, we, we hope everything passes off well. Um, it's a brilliant game for the fans to come to. It's a fantastic stadium. Um, huge occasion. They're the sorts of games as a supporter you want to go and watch and the memories that you want to be a part of. So um, we hope everybody embraces it in that way. Thanks, Tim. Next we go, Jack Pitbrook. Hi what's your assessment of Hans Flick's Germany since he's taken over? Well you can see um, elements of what what he did with Bayern Munich um, and of course the team that played the other night I think seven um, either current or just left Bayern so a lot of experience cohesion of working with him you can see the counter pressing you can see the, the general pressing um, of the forwards especially so we've got to be prepared for that um, and of course with the ball they've got some some talented players you know that was the same in the summer I think um, in some respects the result in the summer was overlooked I'm not sure why but the quality of the team was still very very high World Cup winners everywhere Champions League winners everywhere so real experience of those big occasions. For me, Germany and Brazil are still the benchmark in terms of countries who've regularly, consistently won tournaments. Um, even when you know everyone will talk about the 5-1 here, they ended up in the World Cup final on the back of that qualifying campaign. So you have to respect what they've been as a country and what they are as a country in, in footballing terms. And uh, that mentality is what we're trying to create. We've got to keep getting to the latter stages of competitions and games like tomorrow are brilliant for us. That's exactly the sort of test we need. So do you think this will be the hardest game between now and Qatar? And does that mean that you will pick the strongest possible team for it? Well, I think it's a great measure for us. Um, the next game is always the hardest. So, you know, this, this will without doubt be a brilliant test of what we're about and where, where we're at at this particular moment in time. Um, won't define where we're at in six months' time. So we win to, if we win tomorrow, then that doesn't necessarily mean we'll be spot on in five months' time. There's a lot going to happen in that period. Um, but one of the challenges a couple of years ago of the team was we'd got to a World Cup semi-final, but could we win against the bigger teams? And since that, we've won in Spain, we beat Belgium at Wembley, uh, we beat Germany. So we're starting to get those results and we've got to continue to do that. Just one more one. You've talked, you've talked a lot in the past when you've been critical of the calendar and clearly managing players through this four games is difficult. Mm. Do, you, do you support the fact that there are four games? Do you think that's right, that there should be this many at the end of the season? Well, I, I don't think that's a debate for me now because I'm working with the players and we're, the mindset of this group is we're going to push, we want to perform well, we will manage their load through the training and through the match minutes and everything else. Um, and as John said, you know, every one of them wants to play tomorrow night without, there's, there's no doubting where, where they're at. So there's huge motivation within the group and... Um, I don't think that the long season was the cause of the um, the result the other day. I think not so easy to to stop, to break, to get going again. Um, I think the heat also has a had a big physical impact the other day. Um, but to talk about the season, it's a psychological thing, and um, it's no different to what we had going into the Euros or going into the World Cup before. 
Thanks, Jack. Thanks for Simon at the standard. Uh, Gareth, given everything that happened at the weekend, uh, how pleasing was it to hear today that Germany are going to take the knee with England tomorrow? Yeah, well, we're two um, two nations with um, hu- huge numbers of mixed heritage uh, um, nationals, and um, I think it's uh, an important sign for, for everybody. So. Um, we welcome that. I think um, they were supportive of the LGBTQ com- uh, community as well when they played in Hungary last year. I think they were the first team to do that with the captain wearing the armband. And um, yeah, I think we're we're united in our beliefs on those things. And just one for John. Um, your teammate Manchester City, Kevin De Bruyne, was pretty vocal about these four games and sort of concerns around player welfare. I just wonder, do you personally? Have any concerns around that and the amount of games being asked to play, particularly after the long season? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what Kev said, but um, I think I can only reiterate what I said before: is you know, to play for your nation, to play for your country, being called up. Um, I'll speak on my my personal experiences of, of when I was out of the team, and um, like any other player, I'd, you know. It hurt, and you you want to be here, and you got to deserve to be here. So when you're here, you got to make the most of it. And and to play in big games like this, I think you can only um, you know cherish the moment and and, and maximise what what's in front of you. And you know we can't control our our fixtures. Um, sometimes who we're playing, when we're playing, we've got to um, look at the positive side and and and. Go with it and see see where it takes us, and, and I see it as a as a massive learning curve and, and uh, a big step in the right direction to um, set us up for the World Cup. Thanks, Simon. Do we have any further questions? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Phil is um, so still being monitored back at home, um, uh, and yeah, we're just going to have to assess. We it, it's going to be a very individual thing with. Post COVID, you just don't know how everybody individually will react. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, just one last one at the back. Um, Jamal Musiala uh, chose to play for Germany over England. He's made uh, some really big steps with, with Bayern Munich here and even in the national team. I just wanted to mm-hmm. ask what you made of him and whether you regret that he chose yeah, yeah, we'd have liked him to stay for certain um, but when you're training at Bayern Munich every day and you're, you're surrounded by Bayern Munich and German players then that's a little bit more challenging and of course his um, his family have those strong ties so um, we enjoyed working with him when he was in our junior teams he was a really nice boy to, to work with and um, we think we knew he was going to be and is a good player. So yes, we would have liked him for, for sure. But we've got lots of these situations now in England. I'm sure Germany have got the same where players can play for a number of different countries and sometimes your heart is going to take you uh, somewhere else. And we have complete respect for that. So it's nice to see him doing well, having sort of met him I think first off when he was about 13 or 14 in actual fact and uh, yeah so I'm really pleased for him that that's working well tomorrow I don't care less but but generally I'm pleased to see him doing well okay thank you everybody we'll wrap it up